And for our first award, we have returning guest, the amazing Dr. Lauren O'Connor, author of Robin and the Making of American Adolescence. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's a delight to have you back on to announce this prestigious Robin Award. Yes. I mean, this was the perfect award for you, Lauren. So I'm really glad we were able to make it work and get you back on here. Me too. I am honored, truly. Well, this episode is kind of us like reflecting on some of our favorite guests that we've had. And a lot of the people we're bringing on are like people we've had on multiple times that like we love. And when, but when we sat down to make this list, you were one of the first people we mentioned, like yeah. we need to have Lauren back. And this is only your second time coming on our show, but it feels like we know you so well. Right. <laughs> your, your impact has been great. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Well, I feel the same. I'm very Aww. happy to be chatting with you all again and um, love the show. So yes, super, super Aww. excited to be here. Thank well, you. Would you like to read? our nominees yes the nominees for best robin are jason in under the red hood tim rise of the batman dick in dark victory and damien in super sons (laughs) such good options i say as if we didn't pick them (laughs) right i will say chris and i did pick all of these nominees yes we they did. are they are great they are great <laughs> selection of Thank nominees you. there were so many there are so many to choose from yeah so literally a robin down. scholar so yes. i think that means something <laughs> <laughs> lauren do you have a personal favorite on this list so if you were the one choosing it who would you pick mm. oh yes um again I, I don't feel like you can necessarily go wrong um, I will say, and I have said before, that I am a bit of a Jason Todd yes. apologist. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so certainly that jumps out at me. Um, I think that the um, the Dick in Dark Victory is mm-hmm. also, um, in, in my mind, in my experience, that was a, like a very early entry point for me into mm-hmm. um comics and the bat family in particular um and of course tim sales artwork is very um recognizable and iconic so um that being said i i also Mm. um i mean we've talked a lot about tim drake again i think we're planning to talk about tim drake again soon so that that is fantastic and of course the um damien and super sons adorable love it love the you know the depiction of this relationship with a similarly aged peer and kind of what that experience is like for damien so all truly great choices yeah very fair that was good you gave a little tease for what's to come (laughs) yeah i like that a a pro announcer (laughs) (laughs) i do my best (laughs) all right i can't stand the suspense so our our listeners have voted what has been decided yes the winner of the best robin is tim drake in rise of the batman oh my gosh i didn't expect this <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely one of those things tim drake is the best i mean i think anyway but it is one of those things where i was like have we stacked the deck by making the show that we make and attracting the people we attract <laughs> i think that's true like i was watching these polls as they were going and I, for a hot minute i thought maybe dick was gonna win because i think he is a lot of people's favorite default robin mm-hmm um but again like chris was saying i think our listenership knows that we love tim and we've attracted those listeners Mm -hmm. but lauren i i really want to hear your argument for jason todd (laughs) um sure i mean i i think for me and um maybe i should preface this by saying that you know a lot of my research is not solely into the history of robin but in the history of adolescence um and kind of how this somewhat socially constructed identity came to be in the United States, how we came to have this notion of the American teenager and what that looks like and what it means for us, um, you know, adults where we have all been part of this identity in the past. And, you know, it's this constantly shifting demographic group. Um, So I'm interested not just in Robbins, but various depictions of adolescence. And something that I find really compelling and intriguing about Jason Todd is that I think um, more so than a lot of the Um, other Robins, or at least earlier Robins, Jason is this figure who really um, depicts so clearly some of the anxieties that a lot of our society was was having about adolescence at the time during his introduction in 1980. Um, It was 
not the first and not the last, but a, a peak moment for juvenile delinquency, moral panicking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think yeah. that certainly is there in his character and his return in Under the Red Hood, again, as an adult figure, almost harkens back to these fears, these anxieties of like, what will juvenile delinquents turn out to be, right? Suddenly yeah. he's back, he's an adult, he's got guns, he's angry. And um, <laughs> I just think there's a lot there. It's a super, super rich text. Um, and I love analyzing it and talking about it. But again, respect for all of these selections yes. and certainly for the winner, Tim Drake yes. and Rise of the Batman. Well, that right. was absolutely brilliant as always, yeah. Lauren. I was just sitting here like, okay, talk for like two more hours about this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Like I was having flashbacks to reading your book and I just remember yeah. laying in bed and being like, this is brilliant. Yes. So, oh, if you, you haven't me. checked Thank it out, you. Yeah, please. Pick it up. especially please if you're a Robin fan, if you're listening to this show, you should have this book. Like, you should, on. you should absolutely. Um, and I also just for the record to all of our nominees, these are, this having a favorite is like just slightly ahead of the other ones in my mind, at least I love them all so dearly. Yeah, like I in my mind, I'm glad that Tim won this, not just because he's our favorite, Chris, but <laughs> because looking at these books and like their arcs specifically in these mm -hmm. books that are nominated, yeah. like Tim sacrifices his life, which, yeah. you know, I just feel like that's like very heroic, great moment. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, yeah. He dessert. died for this award. <laughs> he died for this award. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Jason Todd came back to life for this award, though. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. Damien probably murdered somebody for this award, but you know, it's fine. Probably several people. <laughs> probably, probably several people. people. <laughs> well, congratulations, Tim Drake and Lauren. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us. Yes, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I yes. can't wait to have you back for some mysterious reason in the future. Mm. Ooh. I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and welcome to our second category of our award. Here to present the award wearing his amazing tuxedo is author of the upcoming Fury of the Dragon Goddess, Sarwat Chara. Hello, Ooh. hello, oh, and thanks for having me along, guys. It's been way too long, and oh, I'm. No. <laughs> can you see the cut of this tuxedo? This is, that's it, a good cut. I can tell you went to the tail. It comes straight Ooh. out of Savile Row. Ooh, wow, wow, yes. yes. Oh my yes. God, you, Sorry, guys. it has been too long. So it has been way so too long. Yes, I'm hoping to do much more catching up this year. Absolutely, we have yes. to. So you're you're coming to us from midnight your time across the pond. Absolutely, because <laughs> underneath this tuxedo is my Batman pajamas. Because you just never know. The only way to wear a tuxedo. <laughs> I think we had said at one point you were our Alfred. So, yes <laughs> you know it's in spirit. It's in character. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Well, Sarwat, would you like to introduce our nominees for this next category? Okay, the nominees for best moment. Uh, number one is Alicia is Batgirl. Two, John kisses Jay. Three, Tim sacrifices himself. And uh, pairing again in number four, Tim and Bernard hold hands. Woo! Drum roll, please. Yes. Voted for as the best moment for the Gotham Outsiders is Alicia is Batgirl. Yes. This is a great this is a great moment in comics. Watching her pick up the bat and be thus Batgirl was it was just hysterical. With the trans pride flag. <laughs> yes moment. it was a great moment I mean, all good moments but i think this is the most iconic yes so what do you have any favorite moments that stand out to you from batman comics that when you think about <sighs> batman there well, those the thing, are yours right so the thing is and this is like really showing my age because it's probably before you guys were even born so <laughs> like i went through so basically i was like sort of silver bronze age batman yeah um and gosh there's uh jose garcia lopez is my favorite artist of all time mm. and every whenever he would do like oh batman or superman is like really really special um and there's 
a Batman comic, which I think is Detective Comics, somewhere in the early 80s. Oh, my gosh, I've got to dig this up. And the front cover is Batman emerging out of the snow, looking epically badass. <laughs> and it was like the snowman drawn by Lopez. And it's basically, and this sounds really weird. Oh, my God, <laughs> I think about it. Really weird. Uh this uh mountaineering woman was up in the himalayas uh gets lost in the snows about to die gets rescued by a a guy gets mm -hmm. taken back to her cave gets nurtured looked after and then of course realizes when the, the flames of the fire illuminate the cave it's the abominable snowman <laughs> Nine months later, <laughs> she has a kid who becomes this Olympic world-class skier. And now that I look back at it, my gosh, it was really, really <laughs> weird. But in the innocent <laughs> eyes of a 12-year-old, it was like this really romantic, tragic story. <laughs> what a journey. And basically, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that was. Well, maybe we'll know, read it with you going forward and then it will yeah. qualify. And so, yes. Uh, oh, gosh, it's like, uh, oh, but recently, recently. Okay. Right. So jumping forward, the, uh, yes. this is probably about uh, maybe four or five years ago Batman and the Shadow. And that was like, oh my gosh, that should be canon. Yeah. Uh, oh, and yeah. so the whole Crossover. thing is like, yeah, who else would have trained the Batman? And it would be one <laughs> of those ones. So, oh, right. You know, was it, you know, was it uh, Henri Ducard? No, mm -hmm. but it was actually really Lamont Cranston, the shadow. <laughs> Batman well, right. Shadow, I really love, but I'm actually going through a bit of a Superman phase. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you were one of the people that got me on the Superman train. You started yeah. talking him up to me. Yeah. Like so years I've ago. been catching up on uh, War World, so I'm a little Ooh. bit behind. Yeah. Uh, Have you been yeah. reading uh, World's Finest with Batman Superman? Well, the thing is, I'm kind of waiting for the trade paperbacks to come okay. out because, like, the uh, and my favorite, you know, friendly yeah. local comic store is so sort of hit and miss. Yeah. And also, it's this whole thing about every now and then it comes out fortnightly, and I think I just got to lose track. Hundred percent. We when yeah. when they start coming out, you've got to do uh, Batman Superman World's Finest. It's honestly like the best superman story to come out lately really okay. very good Putting that on the list. very fine excellent yeah <laughs> so sorry what you've got to tell everyone about fury of the dragon goddess because i need you to hear you talk about it i'm oh, so excited <laughs> right okay it's one of those classic cases of actually the only reason i became a writer was because back <laughs> in the day there was no such thing as professional dungeon masters and mm. so my entire background is D, &D role-playing games etc oh. etc and so it was one of those right so city of the play god came about a couple of years ago and it was like this yes freak story about what happened if this mysterious plague suddenly erupted out of nowhere that's so uh, out of character for the world <laughs> couldn't see it happening exactly <laughs> thought. that's mad that's never yeah right. you all remember um, when sarwat predicted COVID? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was like, yeah, so that was strange. But, um, and so that was me delving into using a Muslim protagonist, but delving into Mesopotamian mythology as a bit of a background. And of course, yeah. the, one of the biggest things out of Mesopotamian mythology is the chaos goddess Tiamat. And so it was one of those situations where, like, oh gosh, if I ever get a sequel, I'm. <laughs> bloody well putting her in it yes. and i got the sequel so fury of the dragon goddess and so this is basically i've always wanted to write a dragon book and i thought if i'm going to write a dragon book it's going to be the ultimate dragon that's so amazing tiamat <laughs> is in tiamat is back <laughs> so yeah and you know um and what and it's also one of these awkward situations where mm. uh Sikanda, the hero in book one, he's yes. a born and brought up in New York. I love New York. I've been there loads of times. And basically, I'm a city boy. But I thought, right, you know, what's going to be fun is if uh, Sik goes on holiday to my neck of the woods. Ooh. So book two is him taking his classic uh, Britain tour. <gasps> so he's in London. And so I get to use all my favourite sites because oh, yay. I love America, you do not have castles. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 
yeah so uh yeah it's been really 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 great fun yeah. and i got a chance to, and it's one of those situations where you know your city well but this gives you an excuse to have a second mm-hmm. look at it I went to the tower of london british museum yeah. all the key places in the story and yeah comes out first oh, of i can't August. wait I, if listeners uh, don't remember, City of the Plague God was just one of my favorite books. I love it so much. I cannot wait for this. I'm edging my seat. <laughs> yes. We'll have to bring you back and you can tell us even more about yes, it. Yes, please. Fantastic. Yes. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming back. Oh, um, my pleasure, guys. Future. Brilliant scene. Yes. Right, let's keep more in touch. Yeah, let's do. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> and right. congrats, okay. Jadzia, for winning the award. Yes, th- good job, Jadzia. <laughs> good grabs, good grabs. Now let's let let's let Sarwat go to bed. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, let me treat the after party. <laughs> yes, yes. See you there. <laughs> and we're back for our newest segment. Uh, our next award. TJ, are you excited for this one? I'm so excited for a gay book. And Woo! we have a gay person here with us. Yes, here to announce a new award. It is Mark Perez. What? Hello. Yes. <laughs> Mark, oh. uh, you're one of our favorites. Thank you Absolutely. for coming back. Oh, I, I love the back. tux you have for the event. It's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I dusted this old thing off. I figured, hey, <laughs> it was time. You're yes, dressed up for the premiere time. of your dreams. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Mark, what? I hear you are on a new show. Yes, yes, that is. Will you tell us a little um, bit? All right. Yes, it's part of the Braxium Network, and the show is called Shooting the Poodoo, and we're on <laughs> Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific time. That's Woo! 9 p.m. Eastern, by the way. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's just a, a group of us just chatting about Star Wars and just pop culture in general, and it, it's just yeah. a great, chill vibe. Um, they're a great group of people, so I, I definitely love getting together with them every Sunday. That's so exciting. Yeah, I'm so excited to listen. Like listening to you on other shows is always my favorite part of those episodes and yeah. having you on here, con- you know, consistently. Oh, yeah. I love talking to you here. So <laughs> oh, congrats. You. you can literally you. come you. on anytime. You just randomly sign anytime. on and we'll start recording. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll just apparate. <laughs> yeah, just <Please>. disappear. <laughs> I believe that you have an award to announce for us. Yes, I am announcing the Gayest Book Award. And who are our nominees? All right. And see, from top to bottom, we are (laughs) going to begin with The Way (laughs) Family Adventures, Yes, DC Pride 2022, Mm -hmm. Galaxy, The Prettiest Star, and the Tim Drake Pride Special. (laughs) <laughs> was it though oh was it pride or was it special i don't know, I don't know. Okay, I know <laughs> someone out there loves it I know, Somebody right? else, that one person out there is mad <laughs> that uh, may, yeah that, that may have been their gateway book you i know, know. You, never hey. know. you never more know. power to you look it right. was gay exactly. it just wasn't gay enough, enough. Yes, or was it? <laughs> we'll find out. There's someone. <laughs> I remember, I think we've had this conversation before. Yes, All right. we have yeah. a few times. Okay. It certainly wasn't as gay as the, whatever they're doing at the Tim Drake title this week. <laughs> I know. I'm sad, like, okay, side note, I'm sad it got canceled, the Robin yes. title, uh, the Tim Drake one. And like Megan Fitzmartin, for all the criticism we've given her, she put this really nice message on Twitter. And she was. I said, thank you for all you've done with his character. And she said... I did my best, I think is what she said. And I was Aww. like, oh, I'm like, go you. Like, so anyway, yeah. just side note, as much as we criticize, also a lot of love to her. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you want to hit us with that winner? Yes, who is the winner? Oh, right. And the winner is Galaxy, the prettiest star. <gasps> yeah! Shocked. I am shocked. <laughs> it really just has never been a gayer book. Right. <laughs> so, Fully clutching my pearls. <laughs> no, oh, I know, right? Like, oh my God, who could it have been? Let's be honest. Yeah. DC put out a Pride special and it still was not nearly as gay as Galaxy of the Prettiest Star. The gayest book they've ever published. It really is. It probably will hold that category for a while because that book is gay. <laughs> two awards for our girl Jedzia. Yeah. Um, I just oh, want to say right. it's not rigged. Like Jedzia did promote the these awards and was like, hey, go vote for me for, to her followers. 
But people that voted did not just vote for the poll she was in. Like, mm-hmm. they all consistently have the same number. So, Good. Yeah. you know, I love yeah. that. Yeah, oh, so right. it, it was not rigged. But, it was uh, not rigged. But it, everyone just knows what the gayest was. And they were yeah. right. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, look. <laughs> There's a trans pride flag on the yeah. cover. Come on. <laughs> CJ, so it was like you were about to start rapping. <laughs> yeah, I was moving my hands over here quite a bit. Um, well, Mark, thank you so much for announcing for us and we're going to bring you back very soon yes yes please (laughs) until then check out mark's pod yes see you next time thanks bye bye and welcome back to our award show coming in for the newest award we have marcus toe hello hello How's it going, everyone? It's so good to have you back. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. Marcus (laughs) is donning his Robin hat once again. (laughs) Love it. So we have this category, best ship. Um, You were one of the first people we thought of, but we were like, should we ask him to do this? Because he was just on and we were like, yeah, but we loved him so much. We may as well try so i'm really glad that you wanted to do this with us thank you yeah 100 <laughs> percent. you're very welcome thank you for having me of course would you read our nominations for the yes. best ship category i'd be happy to <laughs> uh our first ship is tim and bernard for dc pride 22 our second is tim and connor from red robin Woo. uh our third is Bruce and Selena in virtually anything. Yeah, true. <laughs> and Harley and Ivy from the beginning. Yeah, that was a good story. Those are our ships. These are such good ships. You know, we yes. have a little little bit of everything in there, I think. Yeah. I Marcus, like are you partial to any of these? <laughs> <laughs> You know I am. <laughs> yeah, well, CJ, I mean... CJ played his hand a bit by ruling <laughs> one nominee. <laughs> I'm going to go off the board a little bit and do, Please. and I do say Harley and Ivy is one of my yeah. favorites since the that very beginning. That is a great you know, from answer. They Batman, are the animated series, you know, the second they brought those two together in those uh, episodes, you know, you yeah. couldn't, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't yeah. really look away. Yeah, it was magical. Mm-hmm. I do think they are like the ultimate DC ship really right are. now and forever uh, until Tim Con uh, <laughs> happens one day. Of course, of yep. course. Yeah. Um, but who was the winner? I have to know. All right, let me uh, open the envelope for this one. And the winner for best ship is <gasps> Tim and Connor from Red <laughs> Robin. The fans have spoken. I know. The fans have spoken. Just like, like they speak to your commissions all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I did not think Tim and Connor were going to win this poll. I thought it was going to be Harley and Ivy, and they were neck and neck for yeah. almost the entire time and then I, I took a step away and came back and somehow Tim and Connor won <laughs> I didn't think so but anyway anyway I just I'm not saying I'm right I'm just saying <laughs> that you that your side won <laughs> I think all, these are all worthy ships I mean yes Tim, they are they are Tim Bernard we have feelings about but you know <laughs> yeah I will say as of today a new issue of Tim Drake Robin came out Apparently, there's a lot of Tim and Bernard development and Bernard as a character. Haven't read it yeah. yet, but I'm going to get off here and do that tonight. So. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty cute. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think for this one, uh, a lot of um, history goes beyond the voting, yeah. right? Because Tim and Bernard is a, is a good pairing, uh, but it's yeah. relatively new. So, you know, we still yeah. have some time to grow with them. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't have quite the sweet agony of waiting that Tim Gunn does. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's we're yeah. still waiting and still yeah. waiting we're gonna be waiting a, yeah. l- a little bit a little bit well tim and bernard have their moment but then yes. tim and connor end game as we have now spoken here but here on our show they have their moments all the time so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so marcus um, is there anything that you want to tell our listeners to look out for you for where can they find you all of that yeah what sure. are you working on yeah, what are yeah you doing? I'm working on a couple what are you doing? things. Uh, I'm working on a creator-owned project uh, for oh. ID with IDW. Um, it's going to be called Kingdom Riders. It hasn't been announced yet, so um, maybe look out for that for next year. So it's a while. It, it's a graphic novel of 190 pages. Um, so it's a little something different. 
yeah. um, than the, the the monthly floppies. Um, also, I will be on uh, the next. I guess are we calling them seasons now of Star Trek: The Comic Book? Oh, yeah. oh cool! Roddy w as well. So, um, yeah, I, exciting. Yeah, basically, I think they're gonna. I'm gonna be on issue 13 at the moment, and then for a story arc for that. So, yeah. <gasps> oh, I can't wait to see what you're doing for Star Trek. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I, since the last time we talked, I finally finished Excalibur. I have to <laughs> your art on that. I know I said last time I loved it, but like. It, honestly as well written as that book is your art was the best part well, it el- elevates it say. absolutely elevated it so hard so, uh, just so good loved it well i oh, think i think tini and i work really really well together and hopefully yeah. one of these days we'll, we'll be able to jump back onto something but uh, she's killing it right now like she's working yeah. with dc stuff on a lot of dc stuff oh, now yeah She's she's doing amazing work. So yeah, it's a crime is. that you're not on one of her other books right now. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, one I day. mean, one day. Yeah, I'll one say. day, one day. Yeah. yeah scheduling yeah. scheduling me is kind of hard. So it's uh, uh, I've, I've I've been booked up for the last year or so. That's so. fair. Hey, wow. That's good for you though. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Making that money. <laughs> well, I don't know about the money part. I'm busy, but I mean, you're just busy. I'm just busy. Not making money. <laughs> well what do you mean do you mean being a comic book artist is not the most lucrative job what do you mean (laughs) and be like don't get me wrong it's Mm. it's it's perfectly fine yes you seem like you're okay yeah he doesn't look uh, hungry listeners it's okay (laughs) but i am so tired (laughs) yeah i believe that you're working hard (laughs) well marcus until next time Thank you so much for doing this with us. And it was great catching up. Yeah, absolutely. Great catching up with you guys too. Thank you. And thank you for having me on board for uh, announcing this wonderful contest. And uh, I'm glad the the fans spoke. Yeah. And I think, I, I think I you had a lot right to do. Win. Yes. <laughs> I did? Okay. You had a lot to do with this result, I think. Mm-hmm. Your art specifically. So yeah. in a your, way, your this was your aw- doing. Your art awakened <laughs> some things in people, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Uh, you yeah. instigated it. <laughs> Until next time. Till next That's time. Good.